There's a lot of unique weapons in Fallout 4, but I'm only interested in one. Can you beat Fallout 4 with only using the Striker? The Striker is a unique Fat Man weapon, but instead of launching mini nukes, it launches bowling balls. I went with a preset character because I knew my lazy ass wasn't going to make a ugly ass character today. I talked to a salesman selling milk for my delicious frosted flakes. Made myself cereal bowl to try to make a funny bowling joke. But now that I'm writing this, it didn't work, did it? No, it didn't. Just like Fallout 76 at launch. I spread out my special points like this. Later, it would bite me in the ass when choosing my perks because I forgot special work different in Fallout 4. I pre-ordered my copy of Frosted Flakes 2, said goodbye to the milkman, and tried following him, but he closed the door before I was able to get my milk from him. Talked to the wife about the new Crash Bandicoot and how cat girls weren't real and needed to be killed, and heard that my boy Codsworth needed to show me something on Cartoon Network. Ran through the neighborhood and jumped some fences, because you know your boy had to be first for that COD Cold War. I waited with the other people on the VIP waiting line for GameStop, but then realized Mario was mad. So he launched one of his Mega Bomb Mushrooms towards the Mushroom Kingdom, but missed and hit Boston instead, making COD Cold War delay for another year. In the vault, I tried to trap this dude behind a door. It didn't work because he knew how to open doors. I got frozen and then I decided to lay back to relax but then I realized I was going to wake up with a sore neck the next time I woke up from my nap. I saw my wife get shot by a bald guy because she didn't want to let go of that demon child we had long ago. I exited my bed fridge, opened my wife's pod and took her ring because that would sell for a pretty good price. I did the thing everyone does when escaping the vault. Trapped those rad roaches in their room because they ate the dessert instead of eating dinner first. I waited until I was hidden, picked up my new groovy Apple Watch, opened that damn vault door, and left the vault. I met up with my boy Codsworth back home, and then I decided to follow him around the block to see him fuck some blowflies and evict them from their home because they left their shit all over the place and they didn't clean it. I began to scrap sanctuary for all its junk and began to build them fence posts for that sweet, sweet XP. I ignored dog meat, start building things at Red Rocket, went to the Museum of Freedom to complete the out of time quest, passed by a Mr. Handy building, remember it, it will be important later on, met a nerd to talk about his missing daughter, found a key and a painting, opened the safe, played with a newspaper, decided the newspaper was good food, took the newspaper with me for a snack, and traveled to Far Harbor. I saw that my newspaper was gone. I talked to an old lady when I arrived. I waited patiently for the mist to take more victims. Talked to the old lady, set a waypoint for my weapon, and I was off to go find it. I arrived at Beaver Creek Lanes, went inside and got blown up by some landmines when running from the ghouls. This part wasn't easy. I ran into the bathroom, but then saw how many ghouls followed me, and I died. A lot. But I had a plan. The plan was to lure the ghouls back to the town and let the people there handle them. I did this a couple of times, almost died, accidentally put a point on pickpocketing, thinking it was picklock. Don't worry, this mascatool will help us later. I got some nectar from God Howard himself to help me later on my journey. I ran inside the room where the striker is located, but ran upstairs because I got scared. I tried to sneak a couple of times to get the striker. But I died trying to get the ammo. And yes, I got slapped by that ghoul more times than a knee when someone says a funny joke. After a while, I got the striker. I learned the recipe to make more ammo for it and returned to the Museum of Freedom to clap that Fortnite Raider clan. Here is when I realized how good this weapon is against enemies with no armor and one-shotting all the raiders in the museum. I tried to gun bash this raider, but then he clapped me because he actually pack a punched the Olympia. But the second time, I MLG no scoped his ass and met Preston. 
I picked up my Funko Pop, got inside the power armor, and went to lure out Ringo from his sleeping place. When wearing the power armor, I remember that you could do damage from falling from a high place, which meant I had to be careful when wearing power armor. I waited in the gift shop for Ringo to be put down, but then remembered, this weapon cripples people. I vats Ringo's legs and saw him beg for mercy. I grabbed my bowling ball and put my boy down. I saw that one raider still lived, so I vats his ass and made him trip so hard he fell on his face. I told Preston I would help him, but then saved that for later. And then my dumbass forgot to record when I got to Diamond City and got Piper's number. This happened one more time this run. I talked to Nick's mom about saving my boy Nick and was on my way to go save Nick from those wannabe gangsters, the trigger men. On my way over, I checked what difficulty I was on and saw that I was on normal, something I would regret not changing in a minute. I made my way inside Park Street Station and well, I got fucked by the trigger men. Since they had strong weapons and submachine guns, they would melt my health just like a bloodhound using his oat in a smoke cloud using an R99. I had a strategy. I would try to kill one trigger man and then I would run up the stairs to take a nap. This worked for a while until the trigger man slowly went up the stairs and then my bed said I couldn't sleep. There were mobs nearby. I opened the vault door and tried to kill these two trigger men but I missed my first shot and then died for it. I tried to pick up my bowling ball but then I saw it roll through a tube and I thought I wasn't able to get it ever again. I got inside, died some more, until I decided sneaking past would be the best choice to avoid any conflict. I, far I farmed some trigger men until I missed my shot and took some damage. I killed him but his friend was right behind him. I got a drink from a water fountain that would help me later on and I decided to wait until I was hidden and popped Dino's head and bats with one shot. I was glad my ball came back, got my amiibo, talked to the Chad Nick Valentine. I decided to ambush these nerds so I can do as much damage that I can before they got mad. Drank from the fountain and kept going deeper into the vault. Having Nick with me made the, the rest of the vault a walk in the park since he did most of the damage. I arrived at the final boss store, tried to convince Starla that Skinny had that skinny meat but then she pulled the how would you know trick. So I one shotted her ass and tried to do the same with Skinny but that boy was thick so he absorbed the ball just like how Thanos did with Thor's axe and I remembered I should have gone for the head. After trying to kill this trigger man head on I finally popped Skinny Malone, went back to Diamond City to sell some junk and got thanked by Nick's mom for bringing back the Chad Nick Valentine to Diamond City. I sat down to talk to Nick about how TikTok girls caused the great war and my depression. And then got told about a guy with a recipe to make Frosted Flakes 3. Went to go check out his house, but he locked it like a weird person. Got the key from the mayor, saw that he had two beds and handcuffs in his bedroom. Got a clue, made Nick meet dog meat, told Nick he could come with me, but then realized I would make him his companion, so I had to leave my boy behind. Dog meat and I got jumped by a group of mole rats. I took a nap, thought I had to search for another clue, but then I realized... Dog me left me, just like my dad when he told me to go to back to bed because he was just going to go get some milk. We arrived at Fort Hagen. Remember how I told you to keep the Mr. Handy building in mind? Well, it has a bowling alley filled with bowling balls. I took all 39 bowling balls, stored them in the cabinet, went to go buy some ingredients, crafted some more ammo, and I had 27 bowling balls. I returned to Fort Hagen, entered it, and the scents weren't that bad. Most of them took one shot to kill. The others took two. In this part with the two cents, I was on borrowed time because I had to join a Zoom meeting for my class in 15 minutes. After pumping myself with some drugs, I accidentally got into a conversation with Kellogg, but then I vats critical headshot only his forehead and I one shot at him. I got the family recipe for Frosted Flakes 3. I told Nick about it and this was the second part I forgot to record. I went inside Kellogg's brain, saw my wife fake to be frozen. I saw what Kellogg dreams about, apparently he dreams about red bridges. I gathered some supplies for the glowing sea. I went to go take a shit, got my power armor, and I was off to go visit Shrek. I saw Mother Bapsos get killed by a rat scorpion, we met up with Shrek, arrived at Green Tech Genetics, and can I say how much I hated this? The gunners just kept spamming like Fortnite players when they get shot once. After a while, I got to the part where a gunner had a rocket launcher and died a couple of times. But when that was over, I just used the self boy to one shot the Corsa with a critical headshot. Amari told me to find the Thomas the Tank Engine Cotis, and I arrived at the Old Nerf Church. I put in their password, I killed Desdemona because I wanted to get rid of them early. 
I shot Glory and saw I could two-shot her. I killed her and taunted her. I analyzed the chip, returned to Shrek, and learned about teleportation. Took care of the raider problem by just killing the named one with one bowling ball, built a teleporter, and was teleported into the institute. I met Sean and the fam, and I was told about a rogue synth. I got into a problem with the Brotherhood when I arrived, but then remembered I had Pickpocket as a perk. So I took that fusion core, tried it again with the other night, but failed, got inside my new suit of power armor, and can I just say how much this power armor helped me from this point until the end of the game? It made running through the raiders like it was pyro land. I met Gabriel and decided to use the recall code, checked out my new room, and I was inside Bunker Hill. All I did was watch all, all the people inside try to kill each other. I used the recall codes on all the synths, talked to Sean on top of a roof, went to the meeting about Sean dying, talked to Ali Fillmore, and waited to be teleported to Mass Fusion. The Brotherhood wasn't that tough, but I did see one of my bowling balls go off the roof. I got the agitator and I killed the sentry ball. The sentry ball wasn't that bad. It was the assaultrons that had me worried. But then I remembered I could cripple them. I gun bashed them to death, returned to Sean, and found out that Tom Cruise was inside of another closet. I put on my skinny Malone cosplay, threatened Tom Cruise I would take his Lego Death Star set if he didn't join the Institute, returned to Father, said his speech about killing all cat girls in the Commonwealth, did the radio thing, placed the thing in the reactor, activated the reactor, went to a meeting, and there it was. The airship down quest. I told the doc I was ready and was teleported to the airport. I destroyed all the things preventing the homies to teleport in and had to protect the synth. Hack Liberty Prime. This part wasn't easy, but good thing I had this power armor. I saw that Elder Maxon was here and almost pooped my pants. I killed Elder Maxon after a lot of stims saw that Liberty Prime now attacks all cat girls and cat girl believers, got teleported to see the Brotherhood blimp go down in flames, spoke with Sean one last time, and beat Fallout 4 with only using the Striker. This video took about a week to make and had actual effort put into it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like. I, I edited around 12 hours of footage and took the en entire day to write this script. Thank you Midden Squad and Senza for inspiring me to make my own challenge video and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.